Welcome to another episode of He Said, She Said. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to... I've decided He Said, She Said sounds good, doesn't it? I like it, yeah. Yeah. Let's go with it. That's a good name. Laura Erdvin Lentz and Ron here, and I, just Hi. take a second because I'm going to share this, talk amongst yourselves, share this, and then we will get started with today's topic. Hmm. Hmm. Of course, now my computer's slow. Do 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 do. I feel like Jeopardy. So we're really glad you're having uh, you're joining us today. Got a lot of comments about the last one. I got some private messages too. It was pretty fun. Yeah, feel free to comment. I'd like to hear your views too. Almost. <clears throat> okay. Just right. sh- no, almost. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sharing it on yours too. I don't know. I'm getting there. All right. <clears throat> We are good to go. So this is episode number two of He Said, She Said with Ron and Laura. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Laura Erdman Luntz. I am a life coach and yoga educator and essential oil aficionado. I, I inspire people to step into their extraordinary life, that life that's deeply fulfilling, full of purpose, and vibrantly joyful for you. And for those of you who haven't met my amazing husband, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm Ron. And let's see, I've been studying Tai Chi for 40 years and practicing and teaching and a uh, young living distributor using the oils every day. So, so I have to tell you, with this topic, one of the reasons we started these is because we have amazing conversations um, on topics. And, and this one we actually really haven't discussed. I have more pontificated on the topic and he's listened to what well, I have to say. We haven't discussed it recently. We've discussed it through time. I don't know if I've heard your opinion of it. I remember what you've talked about. Well, you know, it's, I mean, we've talked about diet and That's how we, you know, we're a vegetarian at one time. and We evolved. Well, you know, you go through different diets as you learn and change and glean information that you think is appealing and true. Now, I will say he's been tight-lipped all week, telling, not telling me what he's going to share with all of you. So we're going to see what comes out. So tonight, today, tonight, today's topic is what diet is spiritual? And this one is, it's a near and dear one um, to me because I will say I started off my life, and this may shock you all, quite righteous about my diet because mine was the best and everyone else would do well to eat what I ate. And this started when I was a teenager. I think I was in ninth grade when I really started learning about wellness and annoying my mother with raw carrots are actually healthier than cooked ones. So how about just give me the raw ones since I don't like the cooked ones and maybe you should cook this way and maybe you should do this. And a lot of shooting going on um, about my diet and became vigilantly vegetarian with my yogi lifestyle, vegetarian slash vegan for about 22 years. Well, Want to share your story? Mm. Well, the big question after that is, well, then what happened, right? <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was a yogi, too, when I was a teenager and uh, tried vegetarianism for a year. Um, it, it was really good while it was going on, and I enjoyed it, although it didn't work for me living in like a society, you know, if I was off living in like a secluded area with, you know, not having to deal with daily life, it probably would have fit me better. But, um, you're just more grounded. I mean, how do you describe it? I wasn't, I wasn't grounded. I mean, I was, I was doing yoga many hours a day, eating, you know, vegetarian raw type food, thinking that at the time, like the fruititarians, the people who just eat fruit, were, th- were the way to go. So I imagined myself moving to Hawaii and doing yoga and eating fruit. And, uh, you know, that would have been an interesting life. I probably would have been a 
pretty good surfer, but um, <laughs> that didn't happen. I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, I probably spent some past lives doing something similar to that. I love it. Yeah. Well, so then, then what happened for me, <clears throat> so I was vegetarian, and I would say vigilantly, as I said, for 22 years, because I was following the yogic lifestyle. <clears throat> and the last two years of it, I was very tired. Um, I was, <clears throat> I would say sickly. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, but I didn't have a lot of energy. I got sick a lot. And I went to go, I went to visit my, um, my healer. And my energetic healer is amazing. He's always spot on. And as I'm leaving, he hands me this sheet of paper and he said, here's your new diet. This is what I want you to follow. <clears throat> and on it, he had crossed off all legumes and dairy. And I said, uh, what am I supposed to do for protein? And he said, you can have turkey, you can have chicken. He said, actually, lean beef would be amazing for you right now. And I said, I'm vegetarian. And he looked me right in the eye and he said, you're not anymore. And it was really interesting because it really shot to my heart. It was, it was really this confirmation, this, what I'd really known for two years and was denying it because I really had to be vegetarian, living the lifestyle I was living. <clears throat> but you thought you needed to be vegetarian, right? I mean, it was part of Fair your whole self-image and idea of who you are and what you, you know, how you saw the world, you know, like that was to you the humane thing to do, right? Yep, fair enough, that's, right. that's a good way to describe it. And I will say that on the way home, I stopped by our local um, co-op and the deli and I got a grilled chicken breast and literally ate it in the car with my fingers like a caveman. And it felt so good, it felt so good. And after that, it took me about six months of eating meat three meals a day to feel balanced. If I didn't have meat at a meal, then I would feel get low blood sugar, get shaky, I would just feel bad. There's no other way to describe it. Almost car sick, that feeling. And I needed I needed it to balance myself. Mm -hmm. So in, in essence, he sort of gave you permission to listen more deeply to like what your inner self was telling you and to yes. cut through all the the self image and you know I'm a vegetarian because I don't believe in eating animals type of thing and all those beliefs that were in there mm -hmm. it was amazing how fast it shifted too right yeah yeah so so it's an interesting topic is there a diet that's more spiritual than another diet um you know, I'm not a fruititarian. I was a vegetarian. Um, you were a vegan too for a while, didn't you? Do yeah, I, I, I tried I tried a lot of different things. You know, in that period of time, raw food, fasting, different different types of things. Um, you know, and for a while everything was going mm -hmm. well, except um, I didn't actually feel like my feet were touching the ground. I wasn't I wasn't grounded. That was okay for a little while, but then. You know, you have to deal with daily life and... And that was before a family and having oh, yeah. children yeah, was, and I, a business. I was in high school. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't have to deal with that much stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, thinking about diet and spirituality, how do they, how do they mesh? And the first, thing I'm, the first thing I think about is, well, I think about St. Francis, right? You know, sometimes he'd be in areas where he would just depend upon the kindness of strangers to give him food. And so he just ate out of necessity, whatever, whatever came along, you know, probably mm -hmm. at his you know, church, he probably had a garden, maybe an orchard. And back then, he did, I've been at his right? church. Back then, <laughs> right? Um, organic was big because everything was organic, right? Now it's, now it's something, you know, that we we strive to do or you we know, cherish if right? we can yeah so you know I think this whole idea of maybe a spiritual diet may be sort of a modern-day problem you know aside from you know those certain Buddhists and Hindus who are vegetarian because they do it for reasons that of their of their faith right but 
I think it's a very individual thing. As, as individual as each of us, you know, has nothing, you know, I think it goes beyond, um, you know, different types of, you know, ideas of, of what is right or what you need. I think you have to tune into yourself, you know, like Warren helped you, right? Tune into yourself and follow what you really believe is best. And a lot of it's trial and error. You know, you, you, eat, you eat a bunch of stuff, and if it doesn't agree with you, well, then you become aware of that. You need to be aware to be, well, I was going to say, when, when you're aware of what's going on inside of you, how the food reacts to you, then you're, you're choosing the right path. You know, and it has to do with vibration, but it also has to do with, you know, how you feel. You know, when you're eating a little bit more for how you're feeling and how the food reacts to you, as opposed to how it tastes. Um, you know, to me, chocolate chip cookies taste really good. And if I'm not discriminating, I'll eat way too many. He will. Right? So, and that doesn't feel good, but it sure does taste good. So I have to balance, you know, my, my, my wants from what I really need. <clears throat> and you know, I, re I was reading a book in my teens about uh, a Native American medicine man. His name was Rolling Thunder. He was going to go battle some like, spirits. And he went to have a really spiritual breakfast. Now he took the, uh, the, the writer of the book with him. And so they go to a diner and, and the writer's saying, oh, you know, I can't wait to see what he eats. You know, it's this real spiritual thing. And he just orders like everything off the menu, you know, bacon and eggs and coffee and toast and hash browns because he just needed really good food in his body. He just needed to eat, you know, it didn't matter. You know, so on one level, it doesn't matter. You can eat whatever you want and you can still be spiritual. But I think on the flip side of that coin, when you're when you're more tuned into your spirituality, you eat more in accordance to what you really need to nourish your body. And what keeps you feeling good? Right. Because that keeps you conscious. Right. Yeah. It, right. It's it's about consciousness, and it's about you need physical things to nourish the physical, and you need spiritual nutrition to nourish the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're separate, but they work together. The inner mesh. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my Taiji teachers said, "Look in the mirror. You have canine teeth. They're for tearing meat." And I said, "Oh yeah, I was a vegetarian at the time, and he was trying to, like, shock me into consciousness." It is interesting because you know you you realize <clears throat> that there's so many different levels of of this. You know, as you start to look at it, because the yogic path is clearly states it's vegetarian. It's well, you know what it doesn't. Here's what's interesting: is it says ahimsa, which means nonviolence, and that's taken to you don't eat meat. But how far do we take that? Because um, plants, the research has shown, um, show emotions when you cut them. They they show pain, and we're you know as we breathe, we're breathing in microorganisms and to realize that there's all levels to this and how far do we go, and it's a personal choice, right? And for me, for 20 years, it worked really well, and it felt really good because it felt it felt in line with my beliefs, mm -hmm. um, and, and then I changed. And I think we all can change, shift, move, and to honor that, so not only honoring the path you're on, which may have specific rules that you need to look at and consider and to wonder you know, where that fits within your life, but you also need to honor your body in the same way and honor your consciousness because as you change physically, because we do throughout our life, as you change physically and um, spiritually and vibrationally, what your body needs is definitely going to change. And your life circumstances, you know, mm -hmm. kids, and I have one of our children is particularly challenging and we've been through a lot with, with this child and we needed more to get us through those challenges. Right, well he has food sensitivities, so you know, in 
in choosing what foods we eat. We have to read all the ingredients and make sure that it's something that is going to work for him and work for our family. So, you know, there's all sorts of situations that go into what what are you going to eat? And it's going to change every day too, you know. It's like I can eat chocolate chip cookies, but not every day. You know? So I'm a firm believer chocolate chip cookies are part of a very healthy diet. <laughs> for sure. So so where I guess where I'd like I'd like to leave you with one thought and maybe you have it too, have a thought for them too is listen to your body. Really pay attention. Um, I had a great talk with, with uh, a student last night. Uh, we've been working on grain-free for a while, so um, off and on over the past few years, and I feel great when I'm grain-free, and then for a while I needed them, and now I don't need them again. And she's this, the student loves grains, and she said, you know what, I'm realizing now they're not, for now, they're not settling with me. And when you find that foods, foods are going to come and go in your diet. And the more you pay attention to yourself and how you feel in any one moment after you eat things, the more attuned you're going to become to the diet that your body and your consciousness needs. Do you have a final thought? I think that as you grow in awareness, you're going to grow in discrimination and discipline. So it's going to be easier to listen to your body and follow that path than to just eat whatever you want to because it tastes good. Because if that was the case, you know, I'd be eating chocolate cake and chocolate chip cookies every day. And, and ice cream. Oh yeah, ice cream too. But, <laughs> you know, I find that- And I'd, I'd eat potato chips and french fries. So. Yeah, so. And, and we don't, not every day. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, one last thought, perhaps. Um, think of this. Are you a physical being who has spiritual exercises or spiritual um, experiences? Or are you a spiritual being having a physical experience? Thank and you. Which one do you take care of? Yeah. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. So we're excited. This was episode number two. Um, please let us know what you thought and comment below if you have any questions. We've actually been getting a few questions coming in of things that they'd like us to talk about. So that's kind of exciting. That's we'll awesome. Do that. That's awesome. And join us next week, Thursday, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, as we continue our He Said, She Said. And also join me, I'm going to start my own live streams on Wednesday morning. I am going to start live streaming my podcast. So as I'm recording my podcast, I'm going to live stream at the same time, which FYI is very tricky for me because I pace usually when I talk. So sitting in one place is not easy for me. So join me on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Be sure you like my Facebook page, Laura Erdman Lentz. Muse Laura Erdman Lentz and Ron's is Ron Erdman Lentz. Have a great day, everyone. I hope this inspires you to live your extraordinary life. Thanks for joining us.